Hi everyone. For today's read aloud, we actually have a very special guest. We have our very own Miss Lee, who's going to read a really, really fun book with you all today. Enjoy! Good morning, friends. Miss Lee here with your Friday read aloud. I hope you're all doing well and know that I miss you very much. Today I'll be reading Clorinda Takes Flight, written by Robert Kennard and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Let's see what happens. Clorinda Takes Flight. Clorinda the cow took the sun now and then. In the back of a friend's house, the farmhand named Len. When a swallow swooped by, though she leaped up to follow, she raced past a barn, out the gate, down the hollow. Oh, to fly, what a delight, what a treat, what a thrill. She cried as she reached the tip top of a hill. Goodbye, graceful swallow, how sweetly you soar. I've never not once in my life soared before. But I want to be free like you birds in the sky. And I promise you now that I will learn to fly. Florinda ran straight to her friend, the pig hop. She said, I must fly. But the pig told her, stop. We all want to fly. It's a dream we all share. But please, my good friend, a cow in the air? You haven't got feathers, Florinda, nor wings. And to fly, I assure you, requires these things. Clorinda's eyes brightened. She said, please explain why a cow isn't able to fly her own plane. What plane? asked the pig. He was clearly not thrilled. But the cow very cheerfully said, one we will build. She danced to her truck with her face all aglow. So happy the pig couldn't bear to say no. I knew I could count on you, Hop, said the cow, and Lenny will help us. I'm sure he'll know how to cope with the problem if one should arise. Like you, my good friend, Lenny's kind and he's wise. They drove to the dump and found the boxes and cases that they thought they could use for the struts and the braces. The wheels that they needed, they couldn't find sheep, so they borrowed a pair off of Lenny's old jeep. To cover the wings and the long fuselage, they stripped the tin roof off of Lenny's garage. The motor they got from Lenny's washing machine, after first making sure all the laundry was clean. And finally, the friends, with some turns on a screw, got the prop fastened on. And with that, they were through. Lenny Hop and the cow made a very good team. The guys kept her working, and she helped them dream. Those pages get a little sticky. Time for the test flight. Let's put on our goggles. Glorinda declared as Hop wiggled the toggles. When cranked the engine, it gave a loud call. They roared through the guard, and then they took off. Up they go. Hooray, cried the cow as they flew through the skies. Her co-pilot whimpered and covered his eyes. For the wings had came loose and so had the rudder. The plane gave a wheeze and it started to shudder. Downward they plunged, but by some lucky stroke, the plane came to rest at the top of an oak. Poor Hop, he was gasping and clutching his heart. Florinda, he said, I believe from the start your dream was a delightful but slightly unsound. And the creatures like us ought to stay on the ground. Florinda said sadly, I guess that is true. Flight is a thing that a cow cannot do. And yet observed Lynn as he helped them descend. Your plane did take off, so I'd say, as your friend, your goal was achieved. You guys did it. You flew. Well, murmured Hop, I suppose that is true. 
Lorinda cried, Bravo! Hip hop hooray! With the pig's help and lens, she was well on her way to planning the next flight and then several more. What helpers, she said. This is what friends are for. They constructed a rocket. The rocket went, but that didn't matter. Their friends wouldn't quit. A copper, they cried. They all worked nonstop. It went up with a roar and came down with a plop. These are so sticky. One second. Then over the barn rose a glorious moon. It was round. It was full. It was like a balloon. A balloon, the cow shouted. That's perfect. Oh, wow. Yes, cried the pig. Let's get started right now. There on the wash line are clothes of all sorts. We can make our balloon out of socks, sheets, and shorts. A balloon, observed Lynn, as you may be aware, in order to rise, we'll need lots of it, hot air. With glasses and mirrors, the air can be heated. They worked until dawn when the job was completed. The magnified light, when supplied, did the trick. The balloon filled with air, and Clorinda said, quick, into the basket. She clambered the board. Hop squeezed in behind her, and upward they soared. Where's Lynn, they both said, as they rose in the sky. Lynn was still on the ground. He was waving goodbye. For in all their haste about what they would do, they'd forgotten to wait until he climbed in, too. Through cloud banks and rainbows, past ravens and cranes, they flew over mountains and rivers and plains. Their hearts swelled with joy in the wide, intense sky. Oh, hot, Clarinda sighed. It's lovely to fly. What a pretty picture. New York and the ocean both sped by, and then they heard the rich chimes of the famous Big Ben the Big Ben of England. In the crowds down below, people yelled, splendid and jolly good show. They heard drums, fifes, and trumpets, and bagpiping men. Florinda said sadly, we should have brought Len. This concert is something he'd love to attend. It's great fun for us, but I do miss our friend. As for Lynn and his dreams, he had never foreseen that his friends would appear on the news with the queen. The queen told them, bravo, never before have a cow and a pig balloon to our shore. So nil noble heroes, while we with our swords grant you both knighthood, now name your reward. The cow thought and thought, and the pig scratched his head. They whispered a moment, then both of them said, Our helper was Lynn, and how happy he'd be if we could bring back to him some of your tea. How kind, said the queen, that you thought of your friend. As for me, I must say, I'm delighted to send through you to this Lenny the very same tea he'd get if he came or chit-chat with me. With that, they said thanks. For the lengthening shade warmed both the friends that the day would soon fade. Her Majesty's staff helped him load and untie and cheered as they watched the balloon climb the sky. Heading west, ever west, over seas laced with foam, they caught sight at the last of their own farmland home. There, Lynn, with a welcoming cheer, lent a hand and helped them touch down on the best place to land. They gave Lynn a hug. Then the cow, with a grin, presented the tea in his decorative tin.
and they promised their friend that the next time they flew, they'd take him along so he'd meet the queen too. And under the stars and the moon silver beams, they talked of adventures of friendship and dreams. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, friends. Bye-bye. Thanks so much, Miss Lee. That was a great book, and I love listening to it. Boys and girls, I really hope you enjoyed our book this week, and we will see you again next week. Have a great weekend.